What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Wade Paquin. Wade, this is a beautiful house. Where are we? We are in beautiful and historic Jamestown, Rhode Island. Oh man, I love the shingle style and I suspect this house behind me is gonna be really iconic New England style, doesn't it? Absolutely, you know how we build them. A lot of shingles, a lot of cedar. I love it. So this is a WKP design build project. Uh, Wade and I have been friends for a long time. We're shooting videos on Build Show Network. But on this video, I wanna focus on two things. Wade's doing a shingle style in this house, but I think what's behind the shingles is really interesting. And the prep and the trim work that both Wade and his project manager, Joe, have done here are very interesting, very different, as well as this is probably the first time I've seen this style of SIPS construction. Have you heard of SIPS? Structural insulated panels, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a sandwich basically of some insulation and some structure. They've done it on this house that I think is a really interesting and new way. Let's jump into detail, shall we? Let's do it, man. Today's build show from Rhode Island. Let's get going. All right, Wade, introduce us to Joe and tell us about this project. Uh, so Joe is um, one of our project managers and does some design work for us. So this is a design build, all in-house design build. Joe's designed this thing from the get-go and now he's on site project managing it. So it's a really nice uh, hybrid combination to have all that work that goes into the design side and then have that knowledge to be able to execute it as a project manager. That's really cool. Now, Joe, this is a site built SIPS house, but when I say SIPS to you as a builder, what, what do most builders think of when they think of SIPS? Uh, typically a SIPS panel is you know, delivered to the site, sheathing on one side, insulation and sheathing on the inside, or sometimes uh, like a blue skin board yep. on the inside. And it's spanning from structural member to structural member. Um, in this case here, we built a traditional stick frame house and I've applied the insulation on the outside. So we're still creating that sandwich effect, but it's it's happening at our CDX as our um, shear. shear panel. And then our insulation is on the outside that doesn't have to be treated as an insulation that allows us to be more flexible with our trim details and our whole structure of our house. Yeah, I like that. So last time I was here, Wade, the house was full CDX on the outside. Mm -hmm. Looked like any other framed house that I might build in Texas where you're gonna maybe put a, a house wrap over top. But instead, you guys then went with Zip R on the outside of that. What's the benefits of using Zip R as your kind of site built SIPs in your mind? Well, I mean, I think really it starts with uh, the prefabricated wall panels, right? So these are wall sections that come studs and sheathing on it that we're putting in place. So there's, okay, so your sheathing was on too. I forgot about the that. The sheathing was already on. So that was our, that was done in a controlled environment in a, in basically a factory, right? Yep. Um, so we had all these wall panels pre-assembled, brought out here, and all the walls on the first floor went up in a day. And so, so we talked about this before, right? So very efficient, um, quick system. Yep. Um, but because of where we are in Rhode Island and the wind zone here, we can't just use um, the Zip R on our studs. Right. We need the shear, that, so it doesn't give us the shear. So, um, so you're really got you know, two things, right? We're using that um, prefabricated wall panel system because it's, there's a lot of pros to that. Um, and we're getting the shear for, for that with that uh, CDX. Makes sense. And now we're able to put the Zip R, which is what, an inch and a half of foam behind that zip panel. So this is R9 then. This I guess, is an R9. Right? Yep. yep. Yeah, gotcha. This is an R9. So now we've got um, a continuous WRB on the outside of the house. Plus we've getting, as you've talked about, right, we're putting a jacket on the outside of the house with that insulation. I love that. That's, I mean, on a cold day like today, it makes a lot of sense to me, right? If I'm cold, uh, do I want to stuff the insulation in between my ribs or do I want to put a big jacket on? And that's what you guys have done on, the, on this house in effect. But what's interesting is you've used that Zip R product, which a lot of builders put right over the studs, uh, and you've used that in a place that's, I mean, it's calm today and it's a 30 mile an hour wind off, off the water. You know, it's 40 degrees, but I'm freezing out. It's cold here for me as a Texan. So having that full blanket of insulation on the outside of the house, plus the nail base really makes a difference. Yeah. And it's funny, when I pulled up here, the guys were uh, taking two squares out of the Zip R and you can see them taped now. Uh, walk me through what's happening back there, Joe. What would they do that for? Uh, so our reason for that is just continuous blocking for any hangers or fasteners that are going to that structure. Um, our zip actually doesn't allow you, or the code doesn't allow you to um, put a fastener through the insulation because you're essentially using that as a cantilever. Right. 
So you got to get that continuous blocking all the way through uh, to get your proper fastening. Makes ready. sense. So on your porch here, where by the way, you have some beautiful hot dip galvanized uh, posts there that will last a long time. You probably have a connection beam coming back. So they solid block that. Yep. And so, yeah, we've got one small amount of thermal bridge happening there. But for the most part, 99% of the exterior of your shell here has that full insulation depth. Right? Exactly. Yeah, beautiful. Now, one thing that, that I always find fascinating about shingles and particularly the houses you guys do, Wade, is I see this flare detail on a lot of your houses. That couldn't have been easy to do with this zip bar on the outside. What, how do you do that? So the, the, all the zip bar panels go up first, right? So you have that continuity on the panel. Oh, and, and then, then that's applied this later. This is applied after oh, to that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So in other words, where we see that flare, the shingles will flare out. You've got kind of like a belt line around the house almost. Mm -hmm. And all that's applied after that zip bar is on to make that detail still continuous for insulation, but have the nail base like you need. Right, so we've got our continuous WRB, and then we're applying that flare and that band or belt, there's different terms you could use for that, uh, to the panel. And Joe, what's the trim that I'm seeing there? That kind of light tan looking trim, what is that that we're seeing? So we're using true exterior actually throughout the whole house and all our crown, uh, corner boards, window casings. So that's that Westlake Royal building products, uh, true exterior that I've seen you guys use a lot over the years. Uh, works great in this climate, no issues with salt, uh, no issues with, uh, you know, being close to the coast. But what's interesting is, for instance, uh, on this belt line, it looks like there's a shadow behind that, like that trim is brought out. What's the purpose of that? So we pad out our, our trim belt, and we also do that in many areas actually at the rakes and eaves, is so that that shingle course can tuck right underneath there and you're not getting that you know that shingle detail where it's butting to the underside of that trim we're trying to allow that space so that we can get that uh, cleaner detail because right, you've got the quarter inch for the home slicker rain your rain uh, screen okay so you got a rain then your shingle on top of that so by the time you layer up those sh shingles and you get that last 18 inches of coursing if you didn't plan for that then that last shingle that's cut that's might be four or five inches of shingle exposure the last row it would butt to that band board instead yeah, yeah. of tucking underneath. Oh, that makes sense. So it's a much cleaner look. Yeah, that looks really nice. And I've noticed you've got some uh, millwork on the outside that looks like it's that same product, some crown mold and some built up around the windows. It, do you guys mill that on the site or how do you get those products? Uh, so we actually work with a company, uh, Duration, that receives the uh, true exterior product and mills it down some cases they have to laminate to get thicker layers to get it to work. Um, but they provide a whole catalog of profiles as well as can do custom pro uh, profiles for you as well. That's pretty neat. Keith over at, if anyone's looking to use the product, contact Duration, talk to Keith. He jumps right on it, he gets it done for you. He's amazing. Cool, I'll put a link to them in the description below. But uh, tell me why, Joe, I see some white trim and then some trim that looks like it's still the primer. What's going on with that? I suspect there's a reason behind that. So you're referring to the, the window casing and then our belt trim as the delta. So what we like to do is we'll have our windows basically built on the ground to the size they need to be, paint them on site so that everything is, you know, one step ahead. And then we assemble it up there so that you have a uh, painted edge that that shingle's gonna butt up to. Because your shingles are gonna gray out. You're right. not gonna paint those shingles, yeah. right? So cutting back on that paint. Got it. And then you get expansion of shingles. If you don't do it properly, you're gonna start seeing edges that you didn't paint. That makes sense. Over time. But there's no issue necessarily with that tree exterior product breaking down. It's really more of a visual totally. issue, right? It's not yeah, that you have to have it primed because you're worried about water absorption. It's really an aesthetic issue. Mm -hmm. Got it. And also you wanna probably avoid caulking in those locations because if you caulk it, you're gonna to have to recock it. Yes. Yeah, that's one area that we yeah. don't want to caulk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, Wade, this flashing that I'm seeing here at the um, water table, is that water the right table. term? Yep. Uh, what is that? I love that kind of grayish color. Yep, so you're looking at uh, lead-coated copper there. Um, so pre-bent to the size and little pitch that we need, and then that front edge is called a hemmed edge. So it gives a nice clean look, so it's bent over, cool. so you don't have a cut edge exposed. So now your shingles are just drop down on that and any water 
that got behind there will get kicked yeah, out. Yeah, so you have the rain screen or home slicker behind it and the shingles, so any water that does get behind there will come out, hit the top of that flashing and kick out over the water table. Yeah, and probably, Joe, you're still gonna put a piece of tape on that, I suspect, just to make sure that, that water kicks out of there. Yeah, that'll get flashing tape, yep. Yeah, that's really nice. This is actually a, a good example of opportunities where we're you know, doing design build, we're trying to, you know, we're working with a budget, we're working with a schedule, and working with opportunities to bring in higher level details at, you know, at the level that you're touching things, not so much up high, that you can really kind of experience that a lot better. Yeah, that lead coated copper I've seen in your jobs a lot, it just looks so good, seeing that stick out. It's a nice and I look. think the difference between the painted true exterior and the shingles that will gray out over time, that's such a quintessential New England look. Uh, you know, I, you can go to any state in America and see a modern farmhouse but only here in New England, specifically <laughs> Rhode Island, will you see this style. Yeah. Guys, nice work. Thanks, appreciate really, it. Really, really appreciate it, boys. Good, good stuff. Yep. Guys, if you want to see their work on a more daily basis, go check out uh, WKP's Instagram. We'll put that right here below. And if you want to get more tips on this style of construction, building on the coast, I'll put a link to his page on thebuildshow.com below. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. <laughs>